speaking of syndications, because that's definitely grown, exploded over the last you know three or four years. What common mistakes are you seeing syndicators make in the asset management uh, area? So one of the most common things is making sure the investor comes out whole and gets their return. And a big part of that on value add is making sure they have the right uh, renovation plan. And, and from month to month and year to year, they're getting uh, new units delivered at a rent premium paid. And then that is the the rent growth mostly. It is, a, how can you say, it's not organic rent growth. It is uh, an accelerated rent growth per plan. And uh, the most uh, common mistake is that people don't um, deliver a renovation that tenants will willingly pay for. So, so their uh, their projections are based on a certain renovation, but the actual reno- renovation scheduled is not meeting that quality. Essentially, is that kind of what you're saying? Yes. Like like well, they want to charge possible. luxury, but they're renovating only to a basic premium. Exactly. They want to make sure uh, they're fair with their tenants that they're delivering uh, what their photos show. So I like to say that okay, you build a nice renovation, you photo. You take photos of it and then you put that out on the internet on your websites and that is your marketing right there you show a renovated unit uh and then you get it get, draws them to the site they're able to show up and touch it and see it and, they, and then they can say okay uh i get a fitness center here um i get stainless steel appliances a new top it's basically new even though the the property is 1980s and i'm spending uh let's say 40 bucks less than i would if it this brand new one right down the road so this is a deal in my book because it's equivalent so uh it is the owner's um responsibility to make sure they're providing um you know that quality of unit for them to willingly pay the money for and be honest with their um tenant so in, in a lot of cases, they're making a, a pretty big rent pump bump, let's say $150 to $300 a month because they bought it. Uh, an owner just basically cash flowed and did not pump money back into an, on a new renovation. So they're making those renovations and they're catching up on the deferred maintenance and they're raising the rents to market and, and also making it economic for the tenants. So it's that equation right there that uh, there's some shortcuts being taken and uh, let's say they hire contractors who don't perform and they get behind. Well, those are probably the most common mistakes <laughs> that they make. And then that affects the uh, the NOI and the ability to pay debt service and, and the investment return on down the, on down the road. So you have mm-hmm. to get that component right if you're going to be in this uh, value add business. Uh, and to get the new uh, investment quality asset that everybody saw during the presentation so it's the asset management's job to take care of that and see what can be fixed and what needs to be fixed and to advise and tell them this is critical in order to meet your numbers take care of you and your investors right now <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i've always coached like uh, you know the agents on our team and and folks that are wanting to get their first rental property and it's like look you can renovate it to any any level you want, but you just have to make sure you're renovating to meet the comps that you're targeting. Um, so if you end up pulling back on that, not being quite as aggressive, you want to you know trim your budget down. That's fine. You can do that. Just know and understand that that potentially will impact the rent rate, and w- which from a single family standpoint may not be that bad. Maybe it could. From a multi standpoint, a multi family standpoint, you know that's compounded times. 50, 100, 300 units, um, which has a huge impact on the bottom line. Yeah, it's a big number. And in most cases, that is the yield, that is a return for everybody involved. And that's why they get into this. So, and in the process, what they're doing is positioning a, a much needed housing at a much better quality uh, for the tenants. And, and at the same time, hopefully they are giving, saving the tenants, uh, let's say 40, 50 bucks a month based on a brand new property. So. You have to know your market. You have to know your tenants because they are paying the bills or paying the rent. And uh, so everything you can do to take care of them and to gain trust from them, uh, it will show in your numbers and everybody will walk away whole and happy and, and the investors will get what they need and we're represented. So Because yep. that first uh, year is so thing. critical because everything on years two through five or seven or down, down the Performa um, projections 
everything is based on year one. So yeah, screwing year one up, even if you were like, it's it's pretty difficult to play catch up at that point. Um, so it's just going to have a, a domino effect on on the numbers that maybe you still do okay, but you're you're not going to hit your numbers. Yeah. So there is a way to accelerate the plan and, and get ahead of it so that you are able to sell at your in your five. But the first year will be slower or less than projected. You can still recover. Uh, the thing is, is you have to you have to actively get in there and put together a plan and a process. So with one um, outfit that I worked for, they've been at it for 20 years. They had a pretty well oiled machine and a lot of people like my knowledge in their processes. And I talk about that and they say, I want you to teach me how to do that. So I was an asset manager. I handled the transactions also. And during the due diligence period of, let's say, 60 to 90 days, all the value add plan and all the coordination and all the new teams and everything was done. So that the day after closing, we had a new system, a new property management team, a new flag, a new signage, and everybody was off and running and they knew what they had to do. Uh, meaning that the property management team, the, con the construction team, everything was preloaded and set and they were off and running. A lot of people who get this, they close and they, they take a breather and they say, oh, now what do we do? How do we implement this? Well, they can get behind if they take too long, but uh, a lot of times they can do it in a short amount of time, you know, get, get organized in 30, 60 days. But uh, for most institutional grade people, there's really not a lot of room for error these days, given what they have to pay for these uh, properties on the mm -hmm. front end. So they have to be very precise and very accurate on their timing and their costs and getting this done. And that is where the yield is. And the ones that are successful and able to do it, are the ones who have the experience, they know exactly what it's going to take and they don't have to spin their wheels to figure it out, so to speak. So there, um, having said that, there are a lot of units out there that are smaller in size uh, that a lot of newer people let's say moving up from single families single family flips to rentals to get into 10 plexes and 50 plexes they still have to go through the same thing uh only there's less competition and they can buy these properties for less so if they're able to put together a, a, a creative plan and that fits a niche in a marketplace uh they're able to to have a pretty good investment then and I would suggest, you know, I see people new at the game who started out smaller units. That's that's a safe way, way to start out. I see people, uh, and, and then they move up to institutional, and they do that. You know, institutional is 100 plus, and there's a lot of competition, meaning that the margins are skinnier, and there's less room for error on that regard because you're competing with the REITs, uh, the large owners, large portfolio owners, and they're able to do a, a lot of units, let's say buy two to 500 units a year. And so they have to have a full team uh, that's well coordinated. But uh, believe me, uh, there's a lot of people doing that, and there and there a lot of people are being successful at it. So um, that's the goal of everybody. So uh, and and they soon realize that they need an asset manager or somebody's expertise who's done it before because they can't do it all themselves because there's so many moving parts that they yeah. are spread too thin. <laughs> Absolutely.